So Modern Warfare 2's air quote final three maps have been previewed by Infinity Ward, catering towards competitive play in that field when the CDL season ends next month. So does this mean we're only getting three more multiplayer maps? What does the future of the final seasons of Modern Warfare 2 look to hold? Today we're discussing all that and more as we break down a new report from Dixerto talking directly with Infinity Ward. So as we go along, drop your thoughts below on what you think of this. If you think we'll see more or less maps, what your thoughts are of the timing of it all, and anything else you may have. If you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so that it's all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD and FPS related. I'd love to have you in the community if you'd like to join. And finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market, but more on them in a bit. For now, let's jump into this most recent and strangely worded report. So this information comes from an interview done by Dixerto chatting with multiplayer design director Jeff Smith, in which he revealed the end of the 2023 roadmap to some degree for Modern Warfare 2. While he doesn't go into any specifics, naturally, because we haven't seen anything revealed for even season four, let alone season five, and a season six is not yet rumored to be coming, Smith ended up touching though on a bit of design philosophy for the upcoming maps across those seasons, stating, I think the final ship year, we already had our plan for post-launch. Maybe those maps haven't been started, but at least we've earmarked what they could or should be. There's always some kind of rough plan. Different things happen, different situations come up, and those plans can change. Following by saying, as a fun side note, I'll probably get in trouble for this, but the last three maps of this year, we've kind of leaned into maps I think would play that style really well when asked about how competitive play would factor into maps design philosophy. So there's a lot to unpack here at this simple statement, but I think the bulk of it comes down to either we're straight up getting trolled or there's just miscommunication or misunderstanding with the statements. But the bulk of these two factors are the dubbed wording of final three maps and the competitive leading in Modern Warfare 2 maps at the end of the CDL season. So first, let's touch on that map count. One thing that I am rightfully seeing a lot of confusion and as a result frustration over is the fact that we heard the wording final three maps. Now, right now, it's rumored we're only going to see five seasons. There's been no mention in the game files, at least to my knowledge that I've seen so far for a season six. So while the timing is odd at that point, and if it holds up, we may see a few more extensions where season four and five are a bit longer in duration to fill any gap between that sort of ending of September, October timeframe to when this theoretical Modern Warfare 3 from Sledgehammer will be happening later on this fall. But right now, there's the potential for three maps over two seasons, if that wording is to be taken literally. So does that mean we're only going to be seeing that, like definitively three maps in five months? Now, while that's a valid possibility, a valid understanding of that statement, and if that happens, I definitely think it's cause for a ton of commotion and uproar because that's straight up weak. I think the more likely case is that's referring to original maps, stuff that they are creating just for simply Modern Warfare 2. Now, don't get me wrong, still think that's weak. I do not like the fact that we're still seeing so little original content in Modern Warfare 2, but I also imagine we'll be seeing these maps alongside remakes and other additional things like gunfight maps across those two, potentially three seasons if there is a season six. We haven't seen a season yet though without any sort of addition that wasn't a rehash, so just expecting only those three original items I don't think that falls in line with the pattern right now. I mean, season one, we only had rehashes. We had shipment and shoot houses, the only maps introduced for 6v6 and multiplayer. Season two, we had Dome, a remake from Modern Warfare 3, Museum, a map from the beta being reintroduced, and the battle maps of Observatory and Al Malik International, both from Al Mazra. Expo was only added in as a sort of reactionary addition, if you ask me, set later on in the year for release initially, as even stated by Infinity Ward. So it wasn't something that was going to be brand new for season two initially. It was going to be later on down the line. And then season three here, we have Black Gold, which is from Al Mazra. We have Paleo's Lighthouse, which is new. Satik Cave Complex and Rohan Oil, which is reused from Al Mazra. And then Alburn Hatchery is new-ish. It's not necessarily made explicitly just for 6v6, but is taken instead from the campaign. Something that I can't really fault too much for the development here with this because we've seen that happen with every single Call of Duty game. If you look at any Call of Duty game in the multiplayer aspect, there's going to be maps taken from the campaign. So that is new to multiplayer, but not necessarily new, new, if that makes sense. You probably only played that portion of the campaign once, twice, maybe three times, as opposed to you play on Al Mazra all the time with Plunder, DMZ, or Battle Royale. So when you look at it like that, it's hard to imagine, though, not impossible, that we'd only see three additional maps the rest of the year. But instead, what 
what I think is likely that case is that those standalone maps are being made for specifically post-launch. They'll be funneled in with Almazra locations, remakes, gunfight maps, and more, so that we could theoretically still have two, three, four, six, six maps each of these seasons in season four, season five, and maybe season six, but not just explicitly those three. Certainly still, I think that those three maps that are original is incredibly weak. I wish we'd see more. I will say that time and time again, but objectively speaking, it's still somehow equal to the amount of the original maps we've gotten in the seasons post-launch since the game launched right now. Alburn Hatchery, Paleo's Lighthouse, and then Himmelmat Expo. Still, somehow through all this time, we've only seen three original maps as is. So it kind of makes sense on that flip side if you were to reciprocate what we've seen so far. Now, Editor Espresso's note here, since recording this, Charlie Intel has actually come in to clarify that there is going to be indeed more than three maps releasing before the end of Modern Warfare 2 season, stating the final three maps are just competitively designed. So again, final three original or final three in total at the end, we don't quite know, but there is more than just three coming here in the future. What I will say is, especially after this editor's note and seeing this kind of confirmed a little further, is that it's kind of hilarious to me, no matter what way you spin it, that the final three will be built for competitive because guys, season four is slated to start on June 14th. The CDL championship marking the end of the season for Modern Warfare 2 and when pros will no longer be playing the game after that is June 15th to June 18th. Even if they added all three of those competitively built maps into the competitive pool and you dropped all three of those with the season four launch, somehow making them into the pro play, which they wouldn't do, what are we doing here? We'd only see those maps built for competitive for three to four days, depending on if you count the seasonal launch as well. So that's just, it doesn't make sense to me. You build these maps for competitive play that checks notes here real quick, won't get used in competitive play. And like, I get it, competitive play map design can absolutely also transfer over to standard 6v6 pub map flow and feel. And I do think that the competitive maps are still my favorite to play in MP as well. But I mean, we had the majority of a competitive year with the likes of Fortress Control, a map and mode that was a literal spawn trap every single time you played it. So like we had that for the majority of competitive play this year, and we're going to have three maps introduced after the CDL season is over. Like I tried so hard to like not recently be like, don't let this annoy you. Don't let their seeming trolling win. But dude, it's like what in the actual hell is that? It's genuinely like almost comical if it wasn't so frustrating because like I feel like there are so many different turns throughout this year where it's just like they had the blueprint for what people wanted, what could have done well and what would have made sense. And then they just did the exact opposite, whether that be designing gameplay decisions or like just stuff like this, introducing stuff at horribly timed locations in the year. Like, it's just wild to me that this is a thing that we're hearing from one of the leads at Infinity Ward so confidently saying like, hey, we got this coming, but like way later than it could have been used, but we're still happy with it. I don't know, man. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just something that I'm a little bit bitter on in that regard, but it's just, I don't know, dude. Anyways, that's the recent report here. What do you guys think of this? Do you think we'll get more than these final three maps or do you think Infinity Ward is straight up telling us, hey, you only got three more multiplayer maps coming. Also, what do you think of the hilarity in terms of the timing for competitively built maps at the end of the competitive? Of season. What are the case? Drop your thoughts down below. But before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market. I've worked with these guys now for over two years, and they've been without a doubt one of, if not the most beneficial partners I've worked with in terms of helping my daily productivity. Sitting in front of a desk for eight to ten hours a day looking at a monitor absolutely was something where I felt the effects of eye fatigue and the inability to fall asleep quickly. And while you can get a generic pair or something off Amazon, Gamer Advantage are head and shoulders above anything you'd find there. They're the most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames on the market, and unlike those pair on Amazon. They're clinically proven and they can work with your insurance to help cover some of, if not the entire cost of your order. And as a result, be custom tailored to you. At the very least, I'd recommend checking the link in the description below if you're at all interested in learning more. But if you'd like to pick something up for yourself, use code ESPRESSO to get 10% off your entire order. But that said, that's now what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay the day with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. We got a nice Easter egg guide coming as of tomorrow, I believe. So stay it here on the channel if you guys are at all interested but for now thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace